Uh, it's the first week of March, it's still a bit cold and we're still trying to work between winter weather but we've decided, I don't know if this is a wise decision or not, but for us it makes sense. We decided that even though our toilet takes up a little bit of space, that it would just be so nice to have an emergency form of toilet. We've thought about the compost, compositing toilets and all that. Now we're not living in our van and this is only a 118 wheelbase van. It's a glorified tent for lack of another description. So this isn't you know big UV you big U butte RV, it's just what we need and some of the essentials. So we've decided that a toilet is one of our essentials and we're essentially making our own uh, compositing toilet using a bucket and which there are plenty of videos on YouTube but in going with our existing design you got to remember that our whole bed right now a whole bed kitchen cooler module and everything has not had a single hole drilled in the van it's all held in using the original four D-ring shackle bolts now we're maintaining that same system here and we're actually going to use the bed mounts and the two D-ring bolts that are at the front of the van. There's one down in the corner here, and there's one here in, in where we're going to put our Yeti uh, power inverter. So we need to tie this whole system together. So if we just use the two D-ring shackles we had, that doesn't really support the front. So when I made this little toilet slash power uh, module, right, Again, we're not going to drill a single hole into the van. So at this point, if we finish this toilet module and finish uh, this Yeti slash module, we're not going to have drilled a single hole in the van. We're only going to have utilized the six original D-ring mounting bolts to hold it all in, and it'd be super strong. So first of all, the toilet module is just a fairly simple box construction, which is about 21 and a half inches across the front here. And from the floor to the top, right now, it sits at 18 and a half. Um, the depth of it is uh, 20 inches. We've got, we're going to end up having a double lid construction, but this is the lid for the toilet. And we just bought a basic oak toilet seat from Home Depot. And I've taken all the hinges, all the little rubber feet off, everything off it, and I've screwed it to the um, three quarter inch plywood lid and we'll try and show you the interior of this after uh, get Miller to take some video but it's a basic uh, box construction and we've got three quarter plywood on the front we've bought a super strong right angle bracket it's just some sort of shelf bracket from uh, Home Depot that we're going to modify and screw the right angle bracket on here that will tie into this D-ring mount at the front and to help tie all this in together what we're working on right now is this piece here that actually goes right across and helps block off the storage and helps create the space for the Yeti inverter and we'll probably have some toilet paper and uh, kitty litter or whatever or, or you know peat moss whatever other storage in here but we've created this little complex piece that actually goes across between this little toilet module and the bed module and it goes up in under here as well I'll pull it out so you can see it and that's going to help tie this front part in that doesn't have a de-shackled bolt down so when this is all bolted in screwed in lacquered and airing it's going to just tie all this together as one big module and then those 60 ring shackles are going to be more than strong enough what we've also done across the front of the bed here is put these pieces of poplar. A, they create an edge for the mattress to sit inside. B, they hide that raw edge of the plywood, which we'll be doing on these other edges, so it makes it look a little bit nicer. And, and number three, they also help stiffen this plywood span so that when we're using it as a seat or whatever, this will just help stiffen this plywood up and stop it from wanting to bow. Uh, it is three quarter plywood so it shouldn't but you never know. But it just makes it look a lot nicer so that's another thing we've done here and that's just held on with the same right angle aluminum 
uh, right angle um, brackets that we've created and showed you throughout the video. So let's pull this out so you can get some idea of what I'm talking about. Alright, it was a tight fit, which I want it to. But this will give you an idea of that piece that's going in there. A, this is the same height as across the front of the toilet here. And B, this is the same height as the bottom of the bed base. So that when I slide it in place, we'll put some right angle aluminum brackets along the, the top. And we'll put some across the back at the bottom here. And that'll tie all this together. So this can't try to move, it can't try to warp at the front. Once this piece is in place, it can't try to warp across here. It just ties everything together. Now I'll get my wife just take a video of the D-ring shackles. But the one that I was talking that's partly holding the toilet module in, as you can see right here where my tape measure is pointing, that's the other D-ring hole. And once I'm ready to put it in, we'll basically take the D-ring like we've got. We've got some longer 70 millimeter M8 bolts. And you can get them from Home Depot in the automotive drawers. And that'll just screw in like that. And using the original heavy duty washer and the M8 bolt, as well as the D-ring shackle, that creates plenty of surface to hold down this plywood. It will not go anywhere. So that's basically what we're doing. You can see a little bit here about our right angle aluminum construction in the corner and uh, by the way if we need to just by undoing those two d-ring shackles this whole module slides out and can be removed just like that what i was talking about with the, what we're working on right now is we're getting ready to obviously you don't want to see the toilet every time you come in the van and you don't want to see the Yeti Inverto with all the power cabling and wiring. So right now it's going to have a double lid um, set up here and we're getting ready to work on that so that they don't, the two hinge sections don't conflict with each other. I've spaced the toilet seat out one piece so it'll still be able to open in underneath the, the, the main lid which is going to hide all of this. And that's what we're working on right now, and we'll show you that construction as we go along. But, uh, all right, just to show you the removability, and part of the reason I made it removable so easily was if you ever had to work on this front section of the van. And also, one thing I forgot to mention, because we're in a fairly tight space as a 118 wheelbase, for this double lid, for us to maximize space usage, and for this double lid to work, the only way both of these lids will lift without any restriction is to have my seat forward. So for the purposes of utilizing this, I just have to push my seat forward a little bit so that the corner of the lids aren't going to hit the back of the seat. I don't have to tilt the seat or anything, but I have to move forward, which is no big deal. I can even do that from inside the van. So, and how easy this thing is to remove is essentially you would take out both D-ring shackles and then I'm not going to remove it totally but now it's just a matter of sliding it out and turning it and the whole thing will actually come out This is the, uh, the remaining floor space that we have available in the 118 wheelbase. And what we've done here is we've used this little bit of overhang from the bed area that actually stored a Yeti and then there's a couple other compartments here for storage. Um, we got this unit here with the uh, double lid system and that's because we ultimately decided that it was important to have a uh, emergency toilet. We decided that you know we should really just in case so it's just a decision we made rather than have a storage we decided that was necessary it also has a large storage compartment here that can be used right now the lid doesn't lift up fully because it requires to maximize the space in the van it requires the van 
uh, the, the driver's seat to be a little bit forward. Just a little bit forward and everything works and it'll lift up.